welcome to Randad's Reviews. In this video, we're going to look at stabilizing your video on your Fuji cameras. This actually can relate to any camera that you use. So if you've got a Fuji camera that hasn't got IBIS inbuilt, and you've got a non-stabilized lens attached, so either a vintage lens or one of the primes that hasn't got uh, OIS in it, you'll know if you do any video in, it's a bit shaky, a bit like this. And as you can see, even though I tried well, I had the Canon 10 to 18 on my XS10. I turned off IBIS, I turned off the IS in the lens and just did a short walk at 10 mil down my courtyard. And as you can see, it's pretty shaky. Now, how could I have stabilized that? Well, A, I could have put IBIS on in the camera, but if this had been my X-T3 or my X-T30, then that hasn't got IBIS, so that one developed. I could have put the IS on, on this lens, but if this lens had been my Samyang 10 mil or a Samyang 21, then that wouldn't have had OIS or IS on it. So that wouldn't have helped. So I could have put it on a gimbal, but that's an added expense. Um, they're getting cheaper, but they're still not cheap. It could have been you just been out and you didn't have your gimbal with you. And you just wanted to take that opportunity to take some, some video. So... What other choices have you got? Well, if you're a Premier Pro user like me, you could have put a water stabiliser on. And you'd have got something like this. This. And as you can see, there's some weird wobbling in the corners and on different buildings. It's better, but it's not fantastic. I believe DaVinci Resolve's got a good stabilisation in it, so that might have been better. What about if you could get it like this? Now, that's not perfect, but it's pretty good. And all I needed was an action camera. And you can use the GoPro Hero from Hero 5 upwards, um, Insta360, or any action camera that logs the gyro information in the actual video format. And then attached GoPro. To the top of the camera like so. And I made sure I pressed record on the GoPro and the camera at the same time. So I started filming at the same time. How's that going to help you think? Well then what we did is took those video files and put them into a free software called Gyro Flow. Now this, from what I can see, has been developed by a developer for drone, FPV drone footage and stabilizing drone footage. But what you can do is take that gyro information and attach it to the video file in the camera and stabilize it that way. Now, that shot you saw, it wasn't perfect, but I'd only had that software for a few hours. So I installed it, read how it worked, went out to take a shot, loaded the video files in, and I, I got that near enough instantaneously. The only thing I had to do is because when you load the video file off the camera into the software, it looks for a lens profile. And there's no lens profiles for the lenses I've got. There's some in there that you can use for some black magic, um, Canon and such like, but there wasn't anything for this. But you can create your own lens profile, which is very easily to do and takes you five minutes, basically. So let me just show you how I get that video footage into the software and how it works. So we'll just go over the computer and have a look at that. 
Right, let's have a look at the Gyroflow software. First off, you need to go to the Gyroflow website and download the latest release. Which, so just download that and then when you've got it downloaded and you unzip it, you just get this folder and it's just an executable. It doesn't actually install. So I've got a shortcut to it down here. And when you load it up, this is the interface. And what we've got to do is drop the file you want to stabilize. So we'll drag and drop my file on there. And it will tell you that a lens profile is not loaded. Now, if you had to drop this in from a GoPro or Insta360 or something, it would have recognized the actual lens, but it haven't got one. And for this particular lens, there isn't one. If you go to an open file, go to where you un zipped your jar of flow you've got camera presets and these are all the presets here and I was using the Canon lens but they haven't got one in here at all for mine so what I did I pressed on the create new and what this does is brings you this other lens calibrator box up and I opened the calibration thing and you just have to Follow the instructions. You basically video this screen going in from different angles slowly and precisely. You then hit auto calibrate and it will create a profile which you can export and save. So I've got that. So if I go back to here, yeah, go to presets, Fujifilm, and I've got the Canon 10 to 18. It will tell you it's an unofficial profile. Use at your own risk. I've created it, so yeah, that's fine. What we need to do now, because if I just play that, that's just the shaky video we had, is some data. So I need to open the data, and it was a, the GoPro 7 that I had on the camera. So I load that in, and this is all the gyro data off that file. And what we need to do then is auto sync this video with the GoPro video, which is why you need to start recording both cameras near enough instantaneously if you don't you can put some info in to tell it when it started but i just press both at the time and we auto sync and it will analyze and as you can see it starts putting where it's synced up the data and then we've got the data synced now the next things we can alter how much smoothing you want how you want it to zoom in so we can do no zooming so if we do that on the default you'll see the warping of the edges there's the synchronization so that's with no zoom in we put it to static zoom it will just pick the deepest bit if we use dynamic zoom in it'll then change the zoom So I, that was default. We got plain 3D. I went through each one just to see which seemed any better. And I plumbed on this velocity dampened and I left it at this basic settings. So you can play around with these settings to get different smoothness. But this one's, this seemed to work straight out of the box for me. I also put in the roller shutter correction and I looked up the Fuji XS10's rolling shutter readout and it came out as 8 milliseconds. That seemed to work okay. So once you're happy with that, you can turn stabilization on off so you see how much different it is. You can then export it. You can either export it as 264, 265 or ProRes or a PNG sequence. Now I've done 265, let's try ProRes. With ProRes, we can't use GPU encoding. I'll do it as LT, and we just hit export. And it's obviously using my CPU, so you can hear the fans really kick in. And it's just going to put it next to the original, but with stabilized MOV on the end. I'll just show you the difference in speed doing it ProRes or H265. So it's telling me I've got about two minutes left of this so we're uh, nearly done it took us two minutes two minutes eight seconds so 
So let's just do that as a 265 one. We can use GPU encoding. It's 194 megabits per second. So let's just I'll show you how much quicker it is with GPU encoding. So it just flies with that. So that's what I'd leave it at. Now there is loads more settings you can do. I just wanted to show how easy it is. This is only the third time I've actually used it. So you can see how easy it is just to get to grip straight away. There's obviously other, lots of other things you can do. You can change like low pass filter, rotation if the camera was slightly out. If this gets changed, you can change this orientation, how you want the calculations to be done, all these different ones which are worth trying. And then up here, obviously you've got all these other settings that's worth trying. But there's lots of videos on YouTube showing you how this works. It's aimed at the FPV community with drones and that. So that's what it'll all, all be aiming to, but all the settings should work the same. So we've exported that, we'll exit out. And then we've got the MP4, the 265, or we've got ProRes 1 QuickTime, which is 1.1 gig. And this one's 390 megabytes, so there's your big difference. So as you can see, it's fairly simple. There's loads of settings that I haven't even investigated yet. And that's something I'm going to do in the future. And when I get a bit more proficient with it, I think I'll do another video. And what I'll also do is I'll get some of my lenses and start making some profiles that I can use and I can upload for other people to use. But as you see, it works really well. Yes, it crops into the, the footage, and that's why I shot in 4K 10 mil because I then can have room to, to crop in to do the stabilisation. So I think the, the trick there is to film wider than you actually want so that you've got some croppability as such when the stabilisation cuts in. I have tried it on a longer lens, a 50 mil vintage lens, and it was having troubles, but I don't know whether I didn't get the lens profile quite correct so i'm going to redo that and we'll try some longer lenses and just see how it performs but i think as a quick way of stabilizing some footage that you've got that you'd like to use not specifically that you've gone out to shoot stabilized because then i would use a gimbal or i'd have my xs10 so I get more stable footage i think to if you've done some quick shoot shots some quick b-roll and you just want to stabilize it i think it's it's brilliant and i think it might add some extra stabilization to the ibis in these cameras and i'll give it a go but yeah check it out it's free software link will be down below for for the software and just try it and if you find it uh, advantageous then i'll definitely donate to the developer because he's done a really good job there so if you enjoyed the video give it a thumbs up that helps the channel if you want to see more videos like this, hit that subscribe button. Till next time, see you later.